In this video, you're gonna learn my best sales techniques to sell over the phone and close more deals. Hey, it's Patrick Young here. Make sure to give this video a like, subscribe, and turn on notifications to see more videos like this. And let me know in the comments, what's your number one challenge when it comes to selling over the phone? And I'll be happy to help you out in the future video. So with that said, let's go ahead and get started. Now diving right into it, the first sales technique that I have for you is to let the prospect feel like they are in control. So when you are selling over the phone, and this also applies to even if you're selling in person, right? You always wanna make the prospect feel like they're in control. Because if people in general, not just in sales, but in everyday life, if they don't feel like they're in control and then they feel like someone's pushing them into a direction that they don't wanna go, well, they suddenly become very uncomfortable and it's very difficult to build rapport with somebody who feels uncomfortable and doesn't trust you. So that's why you always need to make the prospect feel like they're in control. But in reality, we all know that the salesperson is actually controlling the entire conversation and is controlling the entire sales cycle. But even though though that's the case, that salesperson, if they're good, they need to make the prospect feel like they're in control, make the person feel like they have choices, and that's how you're gonna be able to build more trust and rapport. So how exactly are you supposed to make somebody feel like they are in control? And the secret to this is actually just to ask certain type of questions throughout a sales meeting. For example, if you were to start off a meeting, right, you don't wanna just go straight into the pitch, you wanna set the right expectations, you wanna set the agenda for that meeting so you know or the prospect knows exactly what they can expect on their call because when someone knows what they can expect they feel like they're in control they feel like they're not going to be surprised by you know like a crazy pitch or you know something like that but instead they agree to everything that you ask for example I could say something like this at the beginning of a meeting hey John so what I want to do is take 10 minutes to learn a little bit more about your business and see if we can work together in any way. If we find that by the end of the call, there is a fit for us to work together, great, we can move on to the next step. But if we find that, hey, maybe it's not the best fit, totally fine, and we kinda just end the conversation right there and we go our separate ways. Is that okay with you? And John, or whoever you're talking to, will say, sure, sounds fine. So what I'm doing is I am asking a question and I'm giving the expectations of what the person can expect on the call. Either it's a fit to work together and we're gonna that person's gonna buy, cool, or it's not gonna be a good fit and they could just walk away and no no feelings are hurt totally fine so that person you know they're gonna have two options either they're gonna buy or they're not gonna buy and they feel comfortable with saying yes and they also feel comfortable with saying no you want to set those expectations in the beginning otherwise people won't feel comfortable telling you no right no is very hard to tell someone because you're kind of rejecting them and you don't want to hurt their feelings so a prospect maybe they're not really interested in your products and services but because you never gave them an opportunity to back out well you know, they don't wanna say anything and you just go through this entire sales process. In the end, they were never gonna buy anyways and they're gonna say no. So you might as well give them that option in the beginning. And throughout the call, you're gonna to want to ask these kind of questions to check the prospect's temperature to see if they're interested in you know what you offer. For example, if you were to pitch your product or service, you would say, hey, do you mind if I go ahead and share a little bit about what I do and how I might be able to help you? And they'll say, yeah, sure, share it with me. Then when you earn that permission, then you can pitch. That's very different from, let's say, if you just kind of pitch your product and service and say, hey, this is what we do, this is how we help, uh, this is how much it costs, because it's too upfront right away. You have to earn the permission to pitch and you have to check the prospect's temperature throughout a sales call to make sure that they're interested throughout the call. And anytime the prospect is not interested and they say no, right? They say, you say, hey, look, uh, do you mind if I go ahead and share you know, a little bit of what I do and how I can help you? If they say, no, I'm not interested, then you can say something like, okay, totally fine. So it seems like uh, this is probably not the best use of our time, right? So do you mind if I go ahead and end the call, right? And then they might say, sure, end the call. Or they might say, oh, that's not what I meant. I kind of meant this, this, and this. And then you kind of continue the conversation if they still want to continue. But if it's not a good fit, and the call right there, right? Because you don't need to waste time on the cold prospect. You just move on to the next one, someone who's more warmer to your offer. So now that you got the prospect feeling comfortable, they feel like they're in control, you also want to make sure throughout the entire sales cycle, whether it's the first cold call, second meeting, presentation, negotiations, you always want to make sure you understand the prospect's pain. And like I always say, if there's no pain, there is no sales. You gotta ask the right questions to understand what problems the person has and see if you can provide a product or solution that will solve those problems. So let's say you are selling web development services, right? And what you do is you, you know, for example, outsource software development, right? So if you're reaching out to companies, let's say in the US, 
You know, you have to understand why is it people would buy from you? What problems do they experience? You have to have a general idea of what these problems are before you even get into the sales meeting, before you cold call, before you send your cold emails, understand the prospects problems. For example, if a startup has a lot of money, they raise a lot of money, but they're having trouble hiring talented engineers to build a software product, well, the problem might be they can't find the right people or the right people are too expensive and they can't afford it. And they're looking for somebody that can do a great job at a cheap price. So if you are a web development agency or a software development agency, and you got people who you know used to work at Netflix, Google, Apple, Amazon, and then you created this company where you can outsource development and because everyone's an expert and you have economies of scales and you're efficient, it would be cheaper to hire your agency than to hire full-time people. Well, now you got a value proposition right because you can provide great service at a cheaper price compared to what someone else can get in the market so if someone can't find talent or the talent too expensive well the pains are they can't find talent and the talent's too expensive so your solution is hey i can make that problem go away we got the best talent at affordable price no matter what your sell is whether it's you know service where you're outsourcing something or maybe you're selling a product you need to understand the prospect's pain and why they would buy and you need to ask these questions or questions that will uncover their pain right so things like you know how long has this been a problem have you tried anything to fix it yet why hasn't it worked well what would you like to do in the perfect scenario what would you want this to look like right and they start painting a picture of their pains and what they want and you kind of see you know can i help this person or not and the last tip i have for you when it comes to selling over the phone is to position your product or service as the solution to the pain right once you uncover the pain people start talking they trust you they're telling you their deepest problems when it comes to their business and they're kind of sharing you know what they want to happen you want to make sure that your product or service fits the bill and fits their problems and can actually make their problems just go away right you're basically like a doctor you're saying hey what are your problems okay i see i see i see have you tried what you tried so far okay 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 and you know once you really understand the problems when you start pitching your product or service you really want to tailor that pitch on the fly to specifically address those problems so if somebody said we cannot find the right engineers or the engineers that we see are just way too expensive and it's overpriced then when you pitch your services for let's say web development you say hey look you know, we understand that a lot of companies out there, especially startups, they can't find the right people or the right people are too expensive. And so what we've done is we created a service where we actually have people that used to work at Apple, Facebook, Amazon, and we basically put together an elite team where we can do development work for you. We can do high quality development work quickly at an affordable price because we already have the economies of scale. Just curious to know if this is this something you're interested in? And then they'll say, oh, that's exactly what I need to tell me more, right? And so, and pretty much if you got a good product or service, right? You know, the sale is actually not that hard. You just need to identify the problems and see if that product or service fixes that problem. If it fixes it and people can see it and you can clearly articulate that during a sales meeting, it's going to be a relatively easy sale because it becomes a no brainer, right? If you're the better choice compared to all the other options they have, easy sale. And so those are gonna be some of the most powerful phone sales strategies you can use to really uncover your prospects pains and move them closer to closing a deal. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like, subscribe, turn on notifications. If you want to see more sales videos like this and let me know in the comments, what was your number one takeaway from this video? And if you want to check out more videos on how to close over the phone, make sure to check out my other videos. And so with that said, my name is Patrick Dang and I will see you guys in the next one.